Hello everyone, this video is going to focus on the Law of Sines and its applications. And before we get started with its formula and how we use it, I want to first establish one thing in the way we regard these triangles. If you're ever given a triangle ABC, this is how we're going to label it. Essentially all your vertices are going to be capital letters, A, B, and C. The sides are going to be lowercase. So the way you think of it is this. This is angle A. Opposite is going to be side A. Angle B, opposite is side B. And then the same thing for angle C and side C. The formula for the law of sines is not a complicated one. It is just simply a proportion. And that is that you have the sine of A, angle A, over the length of side A. And that's equal to sine B over B, which is equal to sine C over C. Essentially what it is is that all the sides, side lengths are on the bottom, and then the sine of the angles are on top. It's okay to have this reversed, by the way. In other words, you could have lowercase a, b, and c on the top, and then the sine of the angles on the bottom. In the examples that I give, I'll be working it out like that. It doesn't really matter because of the fact that they are proportions. Typically what you would do is you would use two at a time. You would either go with this one and this one, or the two outer ones, or you would just simply use the last two, which is the sine of B and the sine of C. The formula really just comes from the area of a triangle. So you'll notice that we have all three different ways in which the area of a triangle is written, given uh, two sides and the angle included. And since all of these represent the area, what you do is you just simply write that statement three times. So there you have it, BC sine A over 2, AC sine B over 2, AB sine C over 2. And then what you do is you multiply every single fraction by 2 over ABC. So essentially what it is is you get this. And then what happens is a whole bunch of reductions. So like, you know, these 2's go away, the B's go away, and these C's go away here in this first fraction. You get all those cancellations in the second fraction, and all these cancellations in the third fraction. When all the cancellations are done, notice what you're left with, and that's how we get our formula. In order to use this formula, you're going to need at least three of the six parts, and yes, there are six parts. You have six, you have six parts in that you have three sides and you have three angles. So you're going to have to have three uh, sides and angles, a combination of them, and of those three parts, two of them must be an angle and its opposite side. Otherwise, you're going to have to use a different formula to help figure out the rest of the triangle. Okay, so let's do an example. Let's say you're going to solve this triangle. And what we mean by solve the triangle, we mean determine all three sides and all three angles. You should note that we have an angle and its side opposite. And because of that, it's okay to use the law of sines. Recall that in a triangle, if you have two angles, you can always get the third angle by using the fact that the triangle angle sum is 180 degrees. Therefore, if you take those two angles, 46 and 63, and subtract them from 180, we get angle B, which is 71 degrees. Okay, so now we have all three angles. Let's get the other two sides. Recall that opposite angle B is side B, so let's go ahead and get side B first. If you're thinking of getting side A first, that's perfectly fine. It doesn't matter in which order you do this. So using the law of sines, it's going to be B over sine B is equal to C over sine C. And by the way, I'm, I'm putting the sine of the angle on the bottom. It doesn't matter whether you put them on top or bottom, so long as you're consistent. If you're wondering why I'm using C instead of A, that's because we have angle C and its opposite side. We don't have that case for angle A and its opposite side. You need both. Plug those values in and this is what you get. Now you should notice that in this setup we only have one variable so that's how we know also not to use side A and angle A. Okay go ahead and cross multiply. That is you'll take 56 and multiply to the sine of 71 and then B and multiply it to the sine of 63 and this is what we get 
And what we want to do is since we want to isolate B, we're going to divide by the sine of 63 degrees. So what happens is essentially is these two guys go away and you're left with this gigantic expression. Just go ahead and let your calculator do the work for that part. 56 times the sine of 71 degrees and then divide by the sine of 63 degrees. Hopefully your calculator is in degree mode by the way for this. And we get 59.4 and that's an estimate rounded off to the nearest tenth. Okay now the only thing left to do now is to get uh, side A. So we're going to use the same process here. So this will be our setup. And by the way, you'll notice that I'm using angle C again along with the side C. The only reason why I'm not using 59.4 is because it's a round off. And it doesn't make you wrong to use 59.4. I'm just simply trying to go for the most exact answer possible. So just as before, go ahead and cross multiply. And then divide. And we get 45.2. And that completes the problem. You now have all three sides and you also have all three angles. Okay, we're going to do a second example here, but it, this example is going to be a special case. And it's called the SSA case, or ASS if you spell it backwards. Yes, I'm aware of what it spells. The SSA case is very unique in that you could have more than one possibility for triangles, or maybe even none at all. The reason being is this. Back in geometry, you were shown four different ways, or five if you uh, learned hypotenuse leg, which is a special SSA case, four different ways of proving that triangles were congruent. That would be side, 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 angle, side, angle, side, angle, and angle, angle, side. You might have also been told something about side, side, angle. Here is a triangle showing side, side, angle. You have the two sides marked. The angle, though, is not between the two sides. It is, in fact, not included. You could possibly have another triangle with those three parts congruent. Here's an example. So as you can see, you still have SSA for both triangles, and yet it's clear that despite that, they are not congruent triangles. Because of that, you could possibly have two solutions and it is possible that you may not even have a triangle at all. How will you know? I'll tell you right now, you'll know there's no solution if your calculator spits out error, meaning in one of your calculations you end up taking the arc sine of a number that's bigger than one. You'll also know that a solution doesn't work if you end up with an angle that is negative. So one of those two scenarios is a tip-off for you. Let's do an example. Let's say that we were going to solve triangle AIE, knowing that angle A is 40 degrees, uh, side A is 54, and side I is 62. You will notice that there is no picture drawn for this, so we will draw one ourselves. This is your garden variety triangle, and I've labeled it AIE, and let's put in our values. There we are. Note the setup. We don't have side angle side. It's in fact side side angle, or angle side side, ASS because the angle is not included between those two sides. This tells us right away that we have to be on our guard for some of the work. Hopefully you recognize there's really only one direction that we can go here in doing this, and that is we have to get angle I. And the reason being is because you have an angle and the side opposite. Here you have a side, but no angle to go with it. So let's go ahead and get angle I first. So that's 54 over the sine of 40 degrees, again, matching angle with its opposite side, and then 62 over the sine of angle I. If you cross multiply those values, now that we've got the sine of I, what we want to do is we want to figure out the measure for angle I. So let's get the arc sine. If we do the arc sine of that, what that gives us, at least in our calculator, is 48 degrees. Now before we go any further, I want to highlight that we should have expected an angle bigger than 40. The reason why is because the angle side relationship. Since 54 is smaller than 62, that means that 40 degrees is going to have to be smaller than whatever angle I is. So angle I has got to be bigger than 40. The question is we just, you know, exactly how big is it? We really don't know. It could be acute, it could be a right angle, it could be obtuse. We just don't know. So for now, it's 48 degrees. Is there a second possibility? We'll explore that in a moment. 
Well, let's continue on, assuming that the answer is 48. If uh, we do that, then we know that with two angles, we can get the third angle. Subtracting 40 and 48 from 180, we get 92 degrees. The only thing left for us to do now is to get this side here, side E. Using the law of sines, we have this set up here. If you cross multiply, you get 84.0. By the way, that's a round off, and I'm putting the point zero to indicate that we round it off to the nearest tenth. Okay, so those are our answers, and we're done, except we're not done. Let's backtrack to this part here when we got 48 degrees for angle I. Recall we stated that we know that this angle is bigger than 40 degrees, but we just did, did not know how much bigger it is. Remember that the sine of an angle is going to be positive in the first quadrant and also in the second quadrant. Also remember that the values repeat. So the sine of 48 degrees is also going to equal to the sine of another angle in the second quadrant. And it's an angle that your calculator is unable to determine, which means you're going to have to get it yourself. Since 48 degrees is the angle, it's also the reference angle for quadrant 2. So to get the real angle, just take 48 and subtract it from 180 degrees. And you get 132. Again, these two angles differ by 180, but if you were to take the sine of both angles, you'll still get the same value. Now the question is this. Is 132 also a solution for the angle? Well, our calculator hasn't spit out error yet, so let's keep on going and see how far we go. Since I here is 132, that means that angle E here has to be 8 degrees. There's nothing wrong with an 8 degree angle. It's small, but it's not negative. As long as we don't have negative, and as long as we don't violate the fact that this has to total 180 degrees, everything's still fine. Let's go ahead and get side E now to finish this off. Using the law of sines, we calculate, and we get 11.7. Again, to reiterate, there's nothing wrong with any of these answers. No uh, calculator issues. Also, everything seems to make sense. Because of that, we can de definitively say at that critical point with the uh, angle I that it is in fact 48 degrees or 132. And since that's the case, that means we have two sets of answers. For 48 degrees, we get this. And for 132, we get this set. So those are our two solutions. That does it for this. I hope that works for you.